Uh, well, we have an album called I'm Alive and on Fire. It's a compilation of uh, songs we put out between 1996 and 1999. That was the first European release. It got the whole ball rolling. Then in 02, we put out Born a Lion, which was more of a kind of a heavier blues rock and roll album. Um, then in 03, we, we put out We Sweat Blood, which was a heavier take on our brand of rock and roll and one of my favorite albums we've ever done. Sleep is the Enemy came out in 06, uh, and it was like more of like a faster punk rock, kind of catchier take on what we had established with We Sweat Blood and Born a Lion. Then in 08, we came out with Never Too Loud, which was kind of our California big, big time producer album. Uh, more of a classic rock take on our sound. Uh, between Never Too Loud and this new album we've got, we put out another compilation called B-Sides, which was like I think 27 tracks of just songs that were just lying around that a lot, not a lot of people had heard, but we thought were just as good. And then, um, and then this year, 2010, we put out Below the Belt, which pretty much takes everything from the previous albums and blends it all in into one album. We couldn't have really planned the way it happened. Um, we shot it in two days in, in, in Los Angeles, and all four of those people who cameoed, who did cameos, live in the LA area, and they just happened to have those two days off, or at least one of the two days off. And uh, so they came down. Elijah was is friends of the directors, the Diamond Brothers. He's friends with with them, so they were able to get Elijah. Um, Selma Blair is friends of the producers. We've toured with Motorhead many, and we've played with them on separate occasions many times. So we know Lemmy and the gang. So we called up Motorhead and Lemmy was available. They were in town making a record. So Lemmy came down and I mean, Mike Watt I've known for years and I just emailed Mike and I said, hey, we're in town. We're shooting this video on Friday and Saturday. Are you available? And he emailed me back and he's like, when and where? And uh, it's just great to have like four for people from different, you know, different areas of, of entertainment, you know, you got, even between Lemmy and Mike Watt, it's just very, very different areas, you know. Watt was from, you know, like the, kind of the, the punk rock, and with the Minuteman and, and Flag, he, they kind of really pioneered what a lot of our band, a, a lot of bands rolling around in vans today take for granted. He's a, to me, he's like, he's up there. I mean, he's awesome. And then, of course, Lemmy, I mean, Jesus. When you can refer to someone as with one word, I mean, he is an icon. And, and for him to come down and, and, you know, be in the video for us, really, I'm really grateful for all of them. And, and then, of course, there's Elijah Wood. I mean, he's he was in Lord of the Rings and Sin City and Selma Blair, you know, Cruel Intentions, uh, Legally Blonde, and, and of course, uh, Hellboy. So, so uh, yeah, heavy people, and they all just did it because they, they helped out, you know, and we're just really grateful. I, I don't really believe in changing or fixing something that isn't broken. Um, it's working for us. We got over here to Denmark, you know what I mean? We're playing Copenhagen. It got us here. Um, plus, I subscribe to um, the notion of bands um, who stick to their story. For example, the Ramones or Slayer or ACDC, um, they, you know, or, or, um, or Motorhead, the, these are bands that kind of, uh, you know, the next, the next Slayer album, we, we, we don't know what it is, but we, we can pretty much predict what it's going to sound like. But at the same time, we all want to hear it. I do. I mean, I want to hear the next ACDC record or the next Motorhead album because even though it sounds a lot like previous records, I mean, they're not going to make a rap record. I want to hear 12 or 13 or 10 different versions of those songs that I, I know of them. And, and I, when, I, when I hear a Motorhead record and it's, it's, you can hear Lemmy's voice again and it's, they're new songs, you've never heard them, but it, there's a comfort in that um, that keeps bringing people back and, and I like that I that's what I love and, and plus it, it's, it's actually very difficult to do 10 or 12 different versions 
of, of um, what you've been doing for so long, it becomes a more of a challenge. And as, as a fan, as a listener to those bands, I mean, I want to hear how they int reinterpret, you know, themselves again. It, it, it's very interesting. It's, it's kind of easier for bands who, you know, they go, oh, well, we're doing an electronic record this time. Well, that's not what I got into your band about. I got into your band for this reason. And there's something very arrogant about a band thinking that their audience will follow them no matter where they go. We know our place and we know that people want something from us. You know, they're always gonna get a hard rock album. You know, it could be more classic rock, it could be faster, like more punk, it could be more heavier, but it's always gonna be hard rock. You know, and, and that's what, you know, five full length studio albums into this, I think people are, get it, or at least starting to get the fact that A, we're not going away, and B, the next album is gonna be a, another hard rock record. But I find inspiration from anything, from, from you know, uh, you know, everything from the obvious, like ACDC and Thin Lizzy and ZZ Top, to the not so obvious, like, you know, Wu-Tang Clan and Cool Keith, or, or the Birthday Party, or the Butthole Surfers, or Opeth, or Hatebreed, or Sacrifice. It all, you know, like there could be a riff that, you know, I hear on an Ornette Coleman album. Or, 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 you know, a Chico Hamilton record, or a John Coltrane record, or, or uh, you know, a brand Nubian album. Uh, it doesn't matter where I get it from. And I listen to a lot of different musics. But I'm always in the, you know, I mean, I'm in a rock band, and a lot of the questions and in interviews are talking about rock and roll. And I, over the years, you know, I've, I've, I've uh, disclosed that I listen to a lot of metal, and. So I get asked that more and more now in interviews. So a lot of people think that, you know, that's all I listen to. And it is the kind of music that I listen to the most, but I also listen to a lot of other ones. I, I personally, I mean, we've been around for 14, over 14 years in Canada, and, uh, you know, we're still relegated. Rock and roll is relegated to this kind of niche market thing or this niche kind of music. Uh, when I think rock and roll should be a viable, uh, a viable form of music the way it is, I see it in, in, in uh, Europe. Uh, but in North America, it's not that way. Um, that's my big problem with Canadian, the Canadian music industry. Plus, I feel that a lot of the Canadian music industry sucks the dick of, of outlets like Pitchfork and whatever the American scene is doing. They'll, they suck dick like that. So like if a band is like written up in Pitchfork, oh, they're so, you know, we don't think for ourselves a lot of the time. And, uh, you know, when I came to Europe for the first time, like 10 years ago, I really, really felt um, that there was more of my kind here when it comes to music. There's people who thought more like I think about music, not just rock and metal, but the way the festivals are laid out, um, like Roskilde in, in, in Denmark, for example, you can have like Slayer on one stage and, you know, Band of Horses on another. You can have like, you know, uh, fucking Hatebreed on one stage and, and, uh, and Broken Social Scene on another. And the crowds intermingle and it's, it's, it's not very, it's not exclusive or elitist in that sense. Whereas you can never have a festival like that in, in Canada or America. Things are in different compartments. And that, that is fostered by and led by the Canadian music industry. I mean, at least in Canada. So that's my big criticism about it. Uh, but there's some great things about Canada in terms of the music, media, and industry. I mean, if you're a band, there's grants that will help you get your feet off the ground and get your ship sailing, you know? And, uh, there's still a lot of rock fans out there and there's still a lot of people who love music. So that's a good thing too. <laughs>